<laughs> and we're back. Um, we have never lived through a cri crisis quite like this before. Struggling to deal with it is common, and for many of us, the thought of picking up a camera seems unbearable. Sit Lally Rico is a wedding photographer focused on raising the bar of the industry. She works hand in hand with her sister, and together they have documented over 700 weddings, and they treasure every single one of their couples. Sit Lally has put together an open and honest talk on how she's been moving through the quarantine, drawing from her personal experience. She's going to give us some advice and insight on how we can start getting excited to shoot again. Her talk is entitled, How to Become a Better Photographer Without Touching Your Camera. The virtual floor is now yours. Thank you. Thank you for having me, guys. And just let me know if you can hear me well. Yeah. I'm just going to be sharing my screen right now. And you should be able to see my presentation. So, okay, I'm Citlali Rico. And I live in Cancun, Mexico. I've been doing this for. Um, I'm going to hop in. We're not able to see your screen yeah. share. Oh, no. Don't tell me that. Oh, I know. I'm just bearer of bad news over here. I know, crazy. Hold on one second. Let me. Okay, I should. Here should be working now. Let me know. Is it working now? No. Um, do you have like a two-screen setup? Do but hold on one second. Oh, okay. We're can you see yeah, it now? We're able to see it now. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Continue okay. on. I'm gonna mosey out of here. <laughs> Okay, thank you guys. So, as I was mentioning, I will be telling you a little bit more about myself later. But if you are like me, that you will be listening to this, all these talks that have been amazing, and I'm like truly inspired about all of them, I normally do this while I'm editing. And if you're in India, probably you're about to go to bed because it might be 3 a.m. in the morning. But if you are listening to these talks and you're not paying attention to the screen, I'm just going to ask you to take two minutes to come back and watch this video because I'm going to show you something that is going to be very important for the rest of the presentation. Okay, so it's just a two minute video. You might have seen it before, but if you haven't, please pay attention. This is an awareness test. How many passes does the team in white make? Go! The answer is 13. But did you see the moonwalking bear? Go! Okay, guys, so this is like, a, let's say, what most of photographers are doing right now. It's that we are kind of paying attention to what we, we are used to, to things that we know that we're familiar with, that we are enjoying seeing. So we kind of need to shift that. And I love that I'm coming after Lenny and Erica's talk because it is very related. And also Tyler talked a lot about this and Ben, Erin and Mauricio did too. And many of the other speakers from yesterday and today have been talking about the same thing. And it is that there are certain things that really matter that we are missing when we're taking photos. So right now we're actually not working and it's kind of crazy that in the whole world this is happening so we do have certain tools that we can start developing to actually become better photographers without taking photos so i'm just going to tell you really quick about the mom story and this is something that happened when i was a foundation workshop teacher um one student that we had, the Foundation Workshop, if you don't know, it's a very important workshop for wedding photographers that want to be trained in a documentary way for their weddings. And I was a mentor for the workshop for like 
maybe eight years for like 13 editions. So it was pretty amazing experience for me. And one of the students once had this awesome assignment of shooting a family in a farm. And they were like a six people family. It was four kids, four boys, mom and dad. And they were homeschooling. Dad was working the whole day. So mom was in charge of the kids during the whole day. It was the, the kids and the home. So this student went there and photographed the whole assignment. He did a really good job on the first day. But when he came back, we started looking through the pictures and we didn't even have to tell him what was happening. And he realized that there was not one single mom, mom photo. She wasn't in the story because he realized that he wasn't relating to her. There was nothing in her that it made him look what was going on in the story and how important the mom was in it. So it made me like, obviously for him the next day, he had to go back and actually include mom in the story because she was very important. Uh, but it made me realize that we kind of do that in weddings too. There are so many things that we are not seeing when we are photographing them that um, I started thinking, what was the thing that I wasn't seeing? And one of the things that I normally wasn't seeing was the kids, which are huge and so important at weddings. And obviously the kids in my life are so important for me, but I don't have kids. So I couldn't relate that much back when I started. And for me, we're like, yeah, of course, our kids are important, but I was taking a couple of shots maybe during portraits, but I actually, I actually wasn't paying attention to what they were doing. So it took me a few years to realize that they were they are amazing. Obviously, there are so many awesome photos of kids doing crazy things at weddings. And that was one of the things that I wasn't paying attention to. The other thing that I realized that was very important to start paying attention to is the vendors. So I came up with this vendors project that it's something that I'm very proud of. And it is um, just kind of showing what all the things that vendors have to do for weddings. And as I said, I live in Cancun. I've been here for quite some time, almost 30 years, and I've been shooting half of my life here for almost 15 years. And I know how hard it is to be a vendor in the area. I know that a lot of you may have come to Cancun for vacation or just to shoot another wedding. And you, you get to see how hard it is to work in a place that it's so hot that the, the, the employee conditions, the employment conditions are not the greatest. It's a lot of physical work. They don't get paid very well. So I started creating this series of photos of people that work at weddings. And if I have a chance to take these photos while I'm shooting weddings, I will definitely take them because I think they also deserve to be seen and we also deserve to celebrate them. And then all of the things that I'm going to say, and I encourage you to do this for the next couple of talks that are left and all the other information that you got, is to start feeling empathy, but for yourself. Like, we are so harsh on ourselves. So whenever we hear someone saying, hey, you should be doing this or that, we're like, oh, yeah, we should be, and, and just hurting ourselves with our thoughts. So I learned this from a very good illustrator that I love. Her name is Terry Bunyan. And she, well, I will share you her, her advice in a little bit, but I want to show you my first photos that I took back in, I don't know, 2006 maybe. I was so proud of this. And these kind of photos were my first photos. So whenever you feel down, you just go and see your, your first images and, and know that you've come a long way and you're doing very, very well now. So the Terry Runyon's advice that I, that I wanted to share with you guys is that whenever you have this voice in your head that is telling you that you're not good enough, you can just tell it, oh, thank you for sharing and just keep going, like just move on. It's not important, it's just a voice. You are good enough and we're gonna get through this. And so this is me. And I am in love with plants. I just love them so much. And I try to have many of my personal projects are around plants. I just love taking photos of them and understanding light, studio lights and ambient light with them. It, it has been a really good way for me to understand it. And obviously, 
because of it, I also use it a lot for my portraits and creative work at weddings. So for me, it's very easy to see plants. For me, it's very easy to see weird. I, I am always looking for weird, actually. If I see someone that doesn't belong, I will shoot them because it's interesting, actually, this thought because he actually belongs. The ones that don't belong are the rest of us because we're well-dressed on a beach. So, But I, I'm always shooting for weird, for different, and that's kind of what I'm showing, too. But what I want to tell you with this is that these are things that are easy for me, and that's why are the ones that I'm photographing. These are the things that I can relate to because these emotions I'm very attracted to because they're easy for me to see. So whenever I see a vendor, as I, as I mentioned with a vendor project, I'm going to follow them and photograph them when I know that I'm going to do something crazy for the shot. So if I see something like these kind of shots, I'm just going to try and include the people around it and see how this doesn't make much sense on a wedding day, but it's still part of the story. And I won't tell them what to do. I won't stop them to like because something is about to happen. I'm normally shooting because this is kind of the way I see, right? So what I'm trying to tell you here is that we need to go beyond that, whatever is easier for us to see and whatever we kind of photograph day to day. So one of the questions I have for you today, it's how, how many emotions can you find at a wedding? Because we're kind of used to see like the joy and happiness and crazy things. Like this is for me like a fireworks wedding, like fireworks photo. But then you have joy, you have excitement, and then you also have the tears, right? Like I have seen so many images like this. This is a great photo. I'm not telling you not to shoot tears. But there are so many photos where we're focusing only on like the, I don't know, nostalgia or sadness or happy tears. Or, But if you actually pay attention to this, there are so many other emotions. Here, I, um, and if you want to screenshot this, this is a list of over 300 feelings, sensations, emotions that you can find at a wedding that we're kind of missing because we're so focused on the other two that I, I just mentioned. So this is very important to pay attention to. If you go through them, you will realize that at least once in your life, you have felt one of those. So definitely you can relate, you can understand them, and you can recognize them, but we're not seeing them. We're not used to recognize feelings and emotions. We are like, we kind of like just photograph for beauty, right? So when I saw Laura, this is Laura the bride, that was standing waiting for her dad to show up for the first look of her and her dad I realized that she was actually feeling really nervous but I was shooting just because she looked beautiful there not because of the not, not to capture the nervousness she was feeling I, I recognized that after when I was calling through the images we have a hard time also noticing how people can get frustrating for certain for certain things because we feel it's awkward for us when we see people doing funny faces. So we have a hard time photographing that too. And this aligns very well to what Lani and Erica were saying earlier. It's that thinking is easier than feeling. So that's why we're so attracted to these photos. And that's why we always want to shoot like with flashes and create interesting shapes and doing awesome things because we're, we don't want to feel. We kind of just want to think about how to make something more creative or fun. And it's hard to, to focus on feelings. So one of the tips that I have for you guys is to observe. Because right now I know that we're not shooting anything because we're at, most of us are at home. So observe, observe your people. If you're at home and you are staying with your kids or your parents, I just encourage you to go and if, you don't even have to grab your camera. Just pay attention to their expressions to their body language, to how they refer to certain things. Just pay attention to how they're interacting with life right now during the, during, I mean, the pandemic situation. Um, these images, the one before this one, I took it from the Documentary Family Awards. And it's by Elika Hunt. You can see all the photos have their credit below. And you can see this one from Ushi Grant, that it is from a catalog that my friend Gulnara Samuilova is creating for like 
a future ex exhibition about the pandemic. So people are actually doing this. They're actually shooting at home. And if you are like me, I am at home by myself. I don't have family around. I don't have no one to shoot, just my cats. But I am, I think what I'm doing the most at this quarantine is being observing myself. I'm doing a lot of personal work, not actually shooting or doing any projects. I'm, I'm working on myself and doing therapy and observing what kind of feelings I've been covering for so many years. And you can actually, if you feel like shooting, you can actually do a ton of self-portraits. This is also for the catalog that Gulnara is creating. But you can go and see this amazing blog that Chantal Lori and Tristan Schuldis, Schuldis created. And it's called Six Feet Apart. And they have a beautiful section with self-portraits of people that have been shooting during the pandemic, too. So you don't even have to take your photos. You just have to actually observe, look inside and see what feelings you are comfortable with, with what feelings you actually are not and you're not willing to recognize in others because you can't recognize them in yourself. That's going to definitely make you a better photographer. So what I recommend is just to observe the feeling, describe it, and put a name to it. I'm going to leave you with this quick video. It is from a podcast that I listened to from Elizabeth Gilbert. She was interviewing Robert Ka Bell, Robert Bell, and they came up with this little chat talk that it resonated with me. They were talking about this um, writer, she wants to become a writer, but she, she works at a call center and it's an awful one. She's like suffering a lot from working there because it's very boring. So they have all these tips for her. So instead of thinking as writers, just think as if they were talking about photographers. If you can pay attention in the valley, then you're gonna have no problem paying attention on the mountain. So what most people do is they're waiting for the big ecstatic experience with fireworks and banners and trombone players to announce to them how good things are and transcendence and redemption and grace and all the big themes we're all chasing. But if you can learn to see the presence, the goodness, the beauty on your knees scrubbing a floor or in a call center, you have just created some pretty powerful muscles in yourself. Even in that awful call center, she's surrounded by people. She's interacting with human beings. What is going on right in front of her, but she's just missing it? And if she could become an observer of that, I mean, the great writers are great observers. They notice what all of us see, but we don't see. That's a writer who, who we ought we need. Right, right, yeah. And actually, she's an uncommon human inside of what's become a very common human experience. You're one question away from fantastic content. <laughs> and you're not even content hunting. You're just being a human being who cares about people. Questions, curiosity, interesting mm -hmm. people find the world interesting. <laughs> Your life is not happening someplace else. <laughs> The action is here. Yeah. So if you have a chance to listen to that podcast, it's pretty amazing. Uh, and it is very related to any creative person. So if you feel like you want to you wanna just become a better person in general, not just a photographer, just start observing and paying attention to what we're not seeing. And one of the things that, well, I'm just going to say this, like, you're not going to miss, if you, if you start seeing these moments, if you start seeing, like, the small little details of people looking at each other in a different way, of people being hot and bored at a ceremony, of people being overwhelmed by, by a, like, long ceremony, or just a lot of passionate love for, for your parents, you will hardly miss like the big, big moments that you really want to get. So that's, that's it. Thank you guys. Thank you for 
hope I'm on time. I've been checking, but I'm no, not sure. You, you are on time. That was yes. that was great. Yeah, and I, yeah, but, like um, those points you've have brought up. It's like I also was uh, got to see your talk at Friends of Fearless, and it's like definitely something that's been sticking with me. Um, one of the questions I have is, what would be your advice on? I guess, uh, like how to practice the ability to see the beauty in the small things. Well, we definitely need to just start observing because one of the things that I think we do is that we always think that we have the answer. We always think that we have everything figured out. So we need to just pay attention to things in a way that we've never seen them before. Like just deconstruct what we're seeing and imagine that this is the first time we're seeing something. So you, um, I don't know, it's it's so funny. For example, I just adopted three, three kittens. And now since I've had them for almost two months and now every single uh, like animal that I see on in the internet or even at home, I, I have like a, like a huge empathy and love for them just because they're alive. And that's the way it should be, right? So it's just uh, like because I've been in touch with different emotions because of my, my three little ones now. So I, I just, I believe that it, there is this time where ugly things are happening in the world. And I definitely need to mention this because what happened yesterday in the States, it's like really, really, really hard to, to digest. And it has to start with us seeing inside and realizing that there are a lot of emotions that we're blocking, that there are a lot of thoughts that we think we don't have that we actually have, and that racism is real and that we're not seeing it within ourselves, but it is there. So it is the same with absolutely everything else that we're willing to see in a different way. We just have to start paying attention, deconstructing it, and questioning it as much as we can. Yeah, I really like that idea of like the willingness to like allow yourself to be open to those type of emotions. Um, the other question that we have is, what do you do when you start to feel unstuck or like getting to that point of burnout to kind of, um, I guess, like reunite your passion for the craft? I do something else, something that has nothing to do with photography or like the times where I've been like really burned out I try to find a small project inside the weddings because sometimes when, when we are burned out it's already in the middle of the the season right like it's so so difficult to just go get through like the the last 10 10 weddings that we have to shoot so I just try to go into every wedding obviously with my hundred percent because I care a lot about my clients but try to find like a like a goal like a, to achieve something different on every wedding so it can be I don't know can you can try and do like a stop motion at a wedding or you can do mini gifts where you shoot a little bit more at a certain situation to give it to them later or just go and try and shoot a different way of shooting uh, table shots or detail shots or something that keeps your mind like creative and in a different state as we normally go into a wedding. So that's kind of what I do. Yeah, I like that. So, Lally, thank you so much for being thank a part you. of this, for doing the talk and taking the time to answer a couple of questions from our audience. Thank you so much for inviting me. Hey, no worries. Bye -bye, Enjoy the rest of your day. Wow, we're, we're getting through it. Two left. I feel like this is a like a round 14. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm on a roll. I was I was trying to like exit the day. Yeah. Okay. Now it's time for a break. We'll 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 be right back <laughs> with D Day.